the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the Cabinet of Ministers announced major decisions in the field of digital transformation and aviation industry, including the approval to train teachers in robotics and artificial intelligence. The country introduces a one-chop system to streamline and expedite visa issuance for 38 visa-free countries with immediate effect. Colombo stock market ends the 12th consecutive day with declines, further extending the negative trajectory. And Asian factories, including those in China's manufacturing sector, displays early signs of recovery last month, with private surveys indicating that chip makers benefited from strong demand. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. At the Cabinet press briefing today, the Cabinet spokesperson Bandana Gurvandana announced some major decisions in the fields of digital transformation and also in the aviation industry. This includes approval to train 7,500 teachers in the area of robotics and artificial intelligence. Speaking during the Cabinet press conference held today, Cabinet spokesperson Minister Bandula Gunavardhana said that the digital transformation has been identified as a very important aspect by the national education policy framework and for this purpose, collaboration between the public and private sectors has been encouraged for the use of artificial intelligence and new technologies. Accordingly, pilot project has been successfully conducted as per project proposal presented by the Skills College of Technology, which is an institution experienced in conducting practical courses such as information technology, mechatronics and robotics. Thus, the Cabinet of Ministers has approved the joint proposal presented by the President and the Minister of Education in order to train 7,500 teachers in selected schools covering all provinces in relation to this team concept. Meanwhile, the current contracts for aircraft fuel supply for Sri Lankan Airlines Limited at Frankfurt, Ichiong, Melbourne and Sydney airports are set to expire on the 31st of October this year. As a result, Limited International bids were invited to select new suppliers and eight companies submitted bids. Based on the recommendations of Technical Evaluation Committee and the Standing Procurement Committee, the Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal by the Minister of Ports, Shipping and Aviation to award the new contracts to selected companies for aircraft fuel supply at these above-mentioned airports. Also, in order to upgrade its in-flight internet services to provide faster connectivity for passengers, Sri Lankan Airlines got the approval by the Cabinet of Ministers for a seven-year contract with Viasat Incorporate to install a high-speed satellite internet connectivity on seven a 330s 300 aircraft of Sri Lankan Airlines. The current fleet of 13 aircrafts offer Wi-Fi and GSM services but with outdated facilities resulting in low internet speeds. To enhance the internet experience, the airline plans to switch to car band satellite technology known for its high-speed data transfer capabilities. An update on ongoing visa policy changes now. The Cabinet has approved a one-chop system for 38 countries eligible for visa-free entry into Sri Lanka effective immediately. This new system aims to simplify and expedite the visa issuance process for travellers. The one-chop system, similar to the model adopted by Singapore, involves issuing a visa or extending a visa with just a single official stamp or seal on the applicant's passport. The single stamp indicates that the visa has been approved and authorized, eliminating the need for additional approvals or complex procedures. The approach is designed to make the visa process quicker and more straightforward for applicants, reducing processing times and simplifying entry procedures. Initially, the Cabinet had decided to allow visa-free access to 35 countries starting from the 1st of October this year. However, the new decision to implement the one-shop system for 38 countries had been put into immediate effect, accelerating the timeline for streamlined entry procedures. Sri Lanka's Lakdhanavi Limited has undertaken the responsibilities of engineering, procurement, construction and commissioning for the Sobadhanavi power plant as the turnkey contractor. This was stated by the Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchana Vijay Sekara. Lakdhanavi will also manage its operation and maintenance for a period of 20 years. Minister Vijay Sekara stated that given the significant cost advantage of LNG over diesel, the project is set to achieve annual net savings of 220 million US dollars to the Ceylon Electricity Board. The gas turbine is capable of operating with up to 30% hydrogen fuel which offers significant potential and support on the country's policy objective of carbon neutrality by 2050. The $220 million project is aligned with state power utility, the Ceylon Electricity Board's long-term generation expansion plan, 
and directly supports the country's goal of achieving 70% renewable energy by the year of 2030 by acting as a balancing power plant for the national grid. The first phase of the Subadhanavi 350 megawatt LNG power plant was opened by President Ranil Vikramasinghe last week. The open cycle section of the plant is 220 megawatts according to the LTL website. Let's take a short break now. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back to the nightly business report. For the 12th consecutive day, the Colombo stock market concluded the market session with a downturn. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index recorded losses at the end of today's market, further extending the negative trajectory. To get today's market summary, we now join with Imad Deen from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a negative note for the 11th consecutive day, mainly due to high levels of selling during the trading session. The market ended at 10,673 points, marking a 46.4 point decrease from the previous session with a turnover of 1.1 billion rupees. The SL20 index also experienced a downward movement of 10.32 points to end the day at 2,990 points. Notable institutions engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers and crossings recorded on Richard Peary's PLC, John Kills Holdings PLC, Ceylon Tobacco Company PLC and Milster Corp PLC. The top five gainers for the day were Milster Corp PLC, Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC, John Kills Holdings PLC, Colombo Coal Stores PLC and Richard Peary's and Company PLC. The top five losers for the day were BPPL Holdings, Hatton National Bank PLC, Chevron Lubricants Lanka PLC, Dialog Asiata PLC, and Valuable Power Eratna PLC. Well, how did the external sector perform during the month of July? Well, to get insights, we have Ranjan Ranathunga standing by from First Capital Holdings. Sri Lanka posted a positive external position during the month of July 2024, where for the cumulative seven-month period, Sri Lanka BOP posted a surplus of $1.8 billion compared to $2.1 billion during the concern period. The widening of trade deficit, coupled with a net outflow of $221 million from the government securities market, caused towards a declining BOP surplus position during the period. Looking at the trade deficit, Total merchandise exports improved by 11% year-over-year to $1.1 billion, driven by growth in apparel, petroleum and tea exports, while total imports increased by 25% year-over-year to $1.7 billion. The main reason behind the increase in imports were high consumer food imports, while textile and textile article imports also edged up. However, on the back of stable crude oil prices, oil imports for July 2024 recorded a decline of 12% year-over-year to $337 million. On the contrary, earnings from both tourism and remittances continued to improve during the month of July, recording inflows of $375 million and $567 million respectively. Increased tourist arrivals to 187,000 arrivals and increased departures for foreign employment are identified as key contributors to the growth in inflows during the period. Thank you. Gold prices saw a slight decline today as investors remained on edge waiting for a significant batch of U.S. economic data that could shed light on the anticipated interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve later this month. Spot gold had dropped by 0.2%, trading at $2,495.50 per ounce. This decline comes after gold prices had surged to an all-time high of $2,531.60 on August 20th, reflecting a period of high interest and value. At the same time, U.S. gold futures have held steady at $2,527.50, maintaining a relatively stable position amid the fluctuations in spot gold prices. The overall dynamics of the gold market are being influenced by the performance of the U.S. dollar, which has been hovering near a two-week high. 
Brent crude oil prices have experienced significant selling pressure recently, dipping to $77.21 per barrel today. Although there has been a slight recovery from earlier lows, the overall market sentiment remains bearish. Investors are reacting to recent data from OPEC, which indicates that eight OPEC Plus members plan to increase their production by 180,000 barrels per day. This anticipated rise in supply casts a shadow over the oil market, but particularly as it coincides with weakening demand indicators from major economies. A report from the Department of Energy in the U.S. highlighted a drop in oil consumption in June to levels not seen since the summer of 2020, considering seasonal adjustments. The Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated slightly against the U.S. dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to yesterday. According to the commercial bank, the buying rate has increased from 293 rupees and 20 cents to 293 rupees and 44 cents, while the selling rate has increased from 303 rupees to 303 rupees and 25 cents. Now let's take a look at the exchange rates against other global currencies. A short break now, corporate updates right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Aitken Spence Hotels proudly celebrates 50 years of excellence in the hospitality industry. Since opening Neptune Hotel in 1974, the company has grown into a global leader, renowned for its commitment to sustainability, quality and innovation. Over the decades, Aitken Spence has expanded its international footprint beyond Sri Lanka, setting new standards across the Maldives, Oman and India, making it the only hotel chain of Sri Lanka origin to have such a wide-reaching presence. Aitken Spence made history as the first Sri Lankan hospitality company to invest overseas with the acquisition of Bathala Island Resort in the Maldives in 1994. This pioneering spirit continued as the company expanded into Oman in 2008. Thuria Chennai was opened in India in 2016 and a successful collaboration with the RIU Hotel Spain followed in 2017. Today, Aitken Spence Hotels manages 18 properties across Sri Lanka, the Maldives, Oman and India, totaling 2,629 rooms. The flagship brand Heritage Hotels and Resorts is renowned for its architectural excellence with three properties designed by the legendary Geoffrey Bava. Notably, Heritage Kandalma became the first LEED certified hotel outside the United States and the first Green Globe certified hotel in South Asia. As it Spence's hotels reflects on its 50-year journey, this milestone serves as a springboard to motivate employees and inspire a renewed focus on the future of hospitality. Digital Mobility Solutions Lanka Limited, the company that operates Sri Lanka's popular taxi hailing application PickMe, is set to be publicly listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange. This move marks a significant milestone for the company as it transitions from a private entity to a publicly traded one, offering investors a chance to own a piece of Sri Lanka's burgeoning digital economy. The initial public offering will involve existing shareholders selling 43.34 million shares at the price of 36 rupees per share, aiming to raise approximately 1.5 billion rupees. The IPO is scheduled to open on the 13th of September, allowing interested parties to purchase shares and become stakeholders in the company. The decision to go public comes as Digital Mobility Solutions Lanka Limited looks to strengthen its market position and enhance its financial flexibility. To facilitate the IPO process, Digitally Mobile Solutions Lanka Limited has appointed CTCLSA Capital Private Limited and Capital Alliance Partners Limited as their financial advisors. The prospectus, which provides detailed information about the company's financial health, business model, growth strategy, and risk factors, will be available on the Colombo Stock Exchange website today onwards. <laughs> 
Emas Holdings PLC yesterday announced the appointment of Tusita Pereira as an independent non-executive director. In addition to her board appointment, she will also serve on the audit committee and the related party transaction review committee of Hamas Holdings PLC. Ms. Pereira has many years of local and international experience in finance, business services and people development. She counts 24 years of experience with two global multinationals. She currently serves on the board of Capital Alliance Holdings Limited as an independent non-executive director. She's a member of CPA Australia and holds a master's degree from QUT Australia in international business. TikTok shared its approach to upholding and protecting election integrity on its platform ahead of the Sri Lankan presidential election on the 21st of this month. The initiative underscores TikTok's commitment to being a responsible and reliable source of information, especially during critical civic events. TikTok has robust measures in place to combat misinformation, violence and hate speech in line with its community principles. The platform is dedicated to removing misleading information about civic processes including voter registration, candidate eligibility, ballot counting and election results. TikTok's policies strictly prohibit content that intimidate voters, suppress voting or incites violence. Over 40,000 personnel in conjunction with advanced technology are deployed globally to enforce these rules, complemented by collaborations with intelligence firms, industry partners and civil society organizations. To help counter misinformation, TikTok works with local and regional fast checkers to help platform consistently and accurately remove election misinformation. Content under review or identified as unsubstained is restricted from the For You feed recommendation and both viewers and creators are alerted about the potential misleading nature of such content. Huawei officially launched the ninth edition of its flagship corporate social responsibility initiative Seeds for the Future in Sri Lanka just last Friday at the Shangri-La Hotel in Colombo. The event was graced by distinguished guests including representatives from the Ministry of Education. The Chinese Embassy in Sri Lanka, the University Grants Commission, University Deans and the Department Heads also participated in the event. The highlight of the evening was the introduction of six promising students selected for this year's program who were joined by their parents. This year's initiative includes an intensive eight-day training session in China focusing on cutting-edge ICT technologies, scientific and technological leadership, global discussions and tech for good group projects. Since its launch in Thailand in 2008 and introduction to Sri Lanka in 2016, the Seeds for Future program has grown to reach 139 countries and regions, impacting over 15,000 students worldwide. It remains one of Huawei's most impactful initiatives contributing significantly to the development of future ICT leaders. The event also featured an address by Dr. Susil Premajantha, who is the Minister of Education, who congratulated the selected students and shared his experiences visiting Huawei's headquarters in China. Let's take a short commercial break. Global updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks advanced today, led by Japanese equities, while the yen steadied after weakening against the dollar over the past week. Japanese stocks rose alongside Hong Kong equity futures, while shares in Sydney were little changed. Traders in Asia will be keeping a close eye on fresh signs of economic troubles in China. Data on Saturday showed Chinese factory activity had contracted for a fourth straight month in August, the latest signal that the world's second largest economy may struggle to meet this year's growth target. The slowdown in China has highlighted the urgency of fresh government stimulus. Asian factories, including China's manufacturing sector, showed signs of a tentative recovery during last month, while private surveys showed that chip makers benefited from firm demand. However, economic headwinds loom. Asian factories are getting busier, but economic headwinds continue to blow strong. That was the reading from closely watched purchasing managers' index numbers on Monday. The figure for Chinese manufacturers rose to 50.4 in August going above the 50-point mark that indicates expanding activity. That number mostly covers smaller export-oriented firms, 
and was more optimistic than official PMI numbers released over the weekend. Chip makers are among the sectors doing well, amid robust demand for products to fuel AI. Economists say that showed up in figures for countries with major semiconductor sectors. South Korea's PMI number rose to 51.9. Japan saw gains too, rising to 49.8, still in contractionary territory, but only just. It was helped by a strong rebound in car output after a safety scandal forced plant shutdowns the month before. Still, worries remain, including fears that US demand, a key factor for Asian exporters, is set to slow. There's concern too over the uncertain outcome of the US presidential election and what might follow. Still, the International Monetary Fund remains optimistic about Asia. It predicts moderating inflation will allow the region's central banks to cut rates to support growth. Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger is expected to present a plan later this month to slice off unnecessary businesses and revamp capital spending. According to a source familiar with this matter, they try to revive the once dominant chip maker's fortunes. Intel could be headed for a big shake-up. Boss Pat Gelsinger will present a plan later this month to sell off businesses and revamp capital spending. It's thought the proposal will be put to a board meeting in mid-September. There was no comment on the report from the firm. However, Intel is under pressure to do something, as it lags rivals on AI. Its market value has sunk below $100 billion following a disastrous second quarter earnings report last month. Meanwhile, rival NVIDIA, seen as the big winner from the AI boom, has seen its value soar to $3 trillion. The source says Gelsinger's plan is likely to see capital spending slashed. That could drive Intel to scrap a $32 billion factory in Germany, a project that had already been delayed. However, it's thought he won't suggest selling off the company's contract chip manufacturing business. That has already been separated from its semiconductor design unit and reports results separately. Intel has reportedly retained Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs to advise on what assets it should get rid of. Programmable chip unit Altera, which it acquired in 2015, is seen among likely candidates for disposal. Intel has already announced plans to cut 15% of its workforce as part of cost-saving measures. And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the business world. Until then, I'm Anradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.